back to a Beyond the Summit presentation of more Chinese Dota. Today we're covering the Zotac Cup. We are in the, uh, I believe the semi-finals of the tournament. We got Vici Gaming versus IG. And do you see two teams has recently faced off uh, numerous times. Hey guys, I believe you're actually casting some of those games. Mm, yeah. We did a couple, I, really, I did a couple of style out of games which involved yeah, both Vici and IG. And I think I would like to say actually VG probably could give IG a run for their money, especially since with the addition of Chuan. Yeah, unfortunately Chuan is not here today. Oh, actually no, hold on. Uh, I did ask the Chinese caster, and she said that Wabi. It's just Chuan is just uh, Chuan is just using the manager's account. That's it. Okay, so Chuan is here today. Yeah, that's Wabi Sabi. Okay, but we don't really. I mean, yes. Uh, somebody did not remember to tag up during the uh, the lobby, so it's going to be difficult to know who is who. We'll try to do some detective work. Wabi Sabi is Tron, you said. Ori yeah. is just Ori. <clears throat> uh, let's see. <coughs> Amy is HYM, YOTK should be end. If I recall, and Ten seconds to go. Suzy. Probably Yang. No. He's the last uh, person. That, that should be, yeah, that should be Yang. Yeah. And then I recognize Burning uh, with his Dragon Ball Z logo. So that's burning. And then... Radiance ban. I Wait, believe Q is, is that... the one that's drafting? Yeah, that's Q. Um, and then the other, I don't know. <laughs> it looks like One Piece, I don't know. It's definitely Dragon Ball. It's going Super Saiyan. It's too small, I can't see it. No, oh, no, no, yeah. it's the, the bottom one. Oh, the bottom one. I think okay. you might be talking the second one. The second one does look like One Piece. Yeah, but the rest I all have at the question marks. So... Anyways, oh, anyways, we got a we got a draft on the way. Uh, traditionally, Vici likes to actually open up their draft with at least one of the supports, if not both their supports. Um, Yang is actually a fairly strong slaughter offlane player. Um, other teams, when they pick up slaughter this early up, like oh, that's a support slaughter. But with with Vici, you don't really know till the very end. Yeah, um, he has impressed me in so so far in all his games. He. I find he's actually a really impactful offlaner. If anything, in China right now, I could you could actually compare him to KP's level. But IG picking up the support and the bench straight up. Well, this is also a burning hero, especially since burning knows this hero extremely well. In the start of the grand final, he actually ended up playing as a carry and kind of dropped. He, he just kind of stopped scaling and ended up playing it as like just as a five, yep. letting Bobaka do other work. Well, let me tell you, uh, burning has experience playing as five as well. Did play. F support for like about a year I think uh, when he was in previous teams but of course back to the good carry now uh, but old VG, right? I think when was he with VG back then I remember him playing a lot of bench yeah the suicidal bench the the support <laughs> bench but uh, the pick I want to talk about is the tree and protector because he's kind of a, a recent addition in the latest patch I think he's actually a very very strong support hero they get nerfed entering the patch but still a very powerful hero in my opinion Mm, okay, I think usually when you, you see the stereotype of Trent Protector, you won't, you think of it as that babysitting hero, sometimes. At least all Trent. So, the way this new Trent kind of works, I find he's actually a really good roamer. He's, he's, he's good for Yeah. But he needs a Midas. He's very greedy. I wouldn't say he needs a Midas, but he needs a good experience in the beginning. My, my, my pets are barking, sorry. Mm. Well, I also feel that if you don't really get the early advantage with the nature's guys, especially since you have that, you know, that bash duration, you just kind of, it's not fun to play this hero from behind, basically. Yep. So, especially since, you know, you, you're kind of depending on the lead seed and the nature's guys for those skills. So, we'll see. I don't think that IG would be too reliant on having living armor to help them around too much. What is that noise? That's... Is that coming from your end? I hear a guitar. Or is that a car? I don't know, my neighbor is doing some stuff. I... Maybe he's jamming. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I cannot control my neighbors. We have to kind of bear with it. My apologies. Uh, Trim Protector is going to be pretty good against B uh, PA. Either forcing our early BKB or even a Manta style purchase, which is not the two item that PA is really looking to buy early on at least. So the PA pick into the Trim Protector I find somewhat surprising. And now between Living Armor and Aphotic Shield from Abaddon, this is actually a pretty scary lineup from IG. It's going to be really tough to actually kill any of these guys. 
And they play so well around the objective, right? Trion is good at protecting towers, Abaddon's good at pushing towers and grouping up, so... Uh, I like currently the draft from IG a lot more. I like VG's draft in the sense where their lanes are a bit stronger, and... Also, if they have... If they pretty much win the laning phase, they crush it. I think they can snowball really hard, and living armor won't really be that much of an issue. So this will probably be like a fight between the PA and the Venge. IG are looking to try and match that, especially in the mid-game transition. Maybe I should use a. Uh... Maybe I should use auto detection. Is it too late to set up here? Let's see. Mm, but into the Abaddon pick, so far I think Chinese teams, their win rate, if I recall, has actually dropped quite a bit, especially after DAC. The PA pick from VG is a surprise though, because uh, they don't really run the PA pick, especially on Total Buff, they have quite a low pick rate on that. But IG, this should most certainly be a venge for burning, unless, of course, like a surprise pick comes up. But, well, oh, all right. that's a surprise pick. Alright, I guess that kind of helps with the living armor. Yeah, Shrapnel is actually quite good against that. And also pretty good against Abaddon in my opinion, because Abaddon really likes to just kind of run in at your team and retreat whenever necessary. But Sniper can actually break your shield from far and sometimes even force out your ultimate. So, I mean, if you look at IG, they don't really have the best of initiation. You do have a a pretty highly level Venge because there's a core <laughs> Venge. But apart from that, I think Sniper is going to be actually not going to get caught out. Obviously, things could quickly change depending on what... Uh, Bubblegut's heroes can be. He normally plays the... Wait, Bubblegut's just playing Trian, right? Spirit. Bubblegut... Oh, yeah, I guess he should be playing the Trian. He does play the hot roaming role for IG. Ember mid against Sniper. Look, I'm not too sure about that. Especially since for VG, the, the Slada does get picked up on occasion by HYM. They do like to combo that with the PA. Think about it. Corrosive Haze and the high right click from PA is really strong, especially against Ember. And, you know, Flame Guard is going to be non existent if she gets a few lucky crits in. So, I think, yeah, VG still have room to actually go for a young hero. They could still pick up the Centaur or something. Like, Stampede is really good here. Yep. Uh, Ember Spirit obviously picked to deal against the Sniper, uh, just to be able to go in. I was just mentioning that they lacked the initiation, but now they do have uh, quite a bit. Especially with the Abaddon, like, they're banking a lot on this Ember Spirit. Yeah, this is what they like to do so far. So, like, they will put Burning in the Venge. He, he actually plays a really active role now in the way IG plays. Like, basically, once he gets the tower, he's just moving up to the top lane. He's moving down the middle. I've even seen him gank at, like, four minutes in with, a, like, a Juggernaut before he's even level six. So we'll see how IG decides to play it. Like, okay, they take out the Nyx. Makes sense because it can be really annoying. That's also a young hero. Let's see, IG. So it should be another support unless they do foresee they want to try and drag this late. Ten seconds to go. Five seconds. All right, I just set up a push to talk key. So I'll mute myself so you don't hear that whatever guitar noise when I'm not talking. Ten seconds to go. All right. Ooh. So Looks like they do want to try and drag this out a tiny bit. Rave King. Is this, is this a carry Rave King or support Rave King? Should be a carry Rave King because... Okay, also one thing I didn't really... I really forgot to mention was that the Chinese teams have actually started to ban on Rave King. Like, I never got the chance to see it, but every time... Or rather, most of the time, I would never see it get past the second phase. Huh, I wonder why is that? Well... It's, it's really good at being in the front lines, especially since now, the way the meta is, like, you, your pause 1, or, your, yeah, your carry basically plays a really active role, and your pause 2 is the one who actually carries the game late now. Alright, so, VG. I mean, they could, they could still go back into the Beastmaster if they're so worried about, like, the reincarnation, but they go back for the Tide, alright? We haven't seen this in a while. Alright, so Vici is expecting the Rave King to be a carry, right? Putting up the Tide yeah. gives them the good lane. Um, I think I think Tide is actually still killable with Trian being there, but Trian might actually just go with Abbott on top. So if it's a 2-1-2, I think the lane should be fine for Vici gaming. Going up against PA. I think, yeah, that's, that's still okay. They'll try to get an advantage for the Abaddon. But afterwards, 
probably you're gonna see some of those rotations to the middle lane, especially against the sniper. Slaughter has a lot of work to do this game though, because if they they like to pressure the safe lane with HYM. So you put Slaughter and Tide together, Trin may just be forced to take that safe lane, or they could also run like an aggro try lane with the Wraith, Venge, and Trin. Yeah, we'll see exactly how they're going to lane it. Uh, just to kind of talk about the history between these two teams, Vici did lose a best of five against IG, I believe just a couple days ago, uh, with a score line of IG 3 2 ing Vici. Vici two, uh, won the first two games, and then IG came back with the next three. And then I think a couple of days before that, it was a 2-0 sweep from Vici IG. over IG. So I think these two teams are actually like pretty, pretty close to each other. Mm -hmm. That was actually quite sad to see VG. They were so close, sad. having a 2 one advantage in the Grand Finals. Especially the way the game ended. They just lost one fight even though they had 2 lanes of Rags advantage and just... GG, just like that. You were casting that game, right? Yeah. Oh, you should be, uh... Pretty familiar with what they're gonna be doing this game then, for the most part. Mm-hmm. So... But a sniper pick though, I... I didn't think they would, put the, they would pick like the Ember into the Sniper. I thought they would pick something a bit tankier, try and contest at least maybe like a DK. But okay, I mean, I, I guess I see the, the perks with having the Sniper. I mean, I think the Sniper or the Ember is not really about the laning stage, right? Like DK, like your suggestion, will be fine the lanes. But I think they're more thinking about the mid game. How do we get in against the Sniper? Because if you look at the rest of the team, Abaddon, Trian, Venge, these are extremely low range heroes that would not be able to initiate. So they're going to really be heavily reliant on this Ember to get in. I imagine Burning is also going to pick up a Blink Dagger to actually initiate. But hold that thought, we're going to see a really big dive coming in from the left side. Ori does not have Shrapnel skill just yet. They're going to come around. This is not a, a gang that I am usually seeing, but going to be effective as they will secure this rune and most likely going to give the other rune to Shred a Trian as well. Pretty good start. <coughs> well... Okay, okay, I mean, regarding your, your point about the Ember Spirit thing, like, so far, any Ember picks have not succeeded because, especially when you lose the lane, like, there has been a lot of Lina. I'm actually surprised that Lina has not even been banned or picked in this game. So, when Ember loses... Oh, the lane, Courier! A lot of... Yeah, lots of wait! Own. Wait! No way! Oh, he didn't get. He didn't go for sprint. He went for the crush. That explains. But yeah, back to my point, like about the Ember thing. If you lose the lane, it's really hard to play from behind because most teams are starting to learn how to no, 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 no. take that timing window and make it turn into a really big advantage. It's pretty much game losing if you don't have a good lane with Ember. I don't know, I think Ember is one of those heroes that can just recover, right? If, if you see a fight going on, you triple Remnant and you get two kills, you're kind of back in the game. So I think, compared to, let's say, the old school way of playing the Battle Fairy Ember, that, when you lose the lane, uh, that's kind of, kind of like GG. But this one, if you lose the lane, you can still kind of fight your way back. And I think that's going to be what we have to see this game, because I imagine Ember is going to lose this lane. Well, maybe they're just banking him to get levels, and it's just really scary though, because if you imagine if you lose the lanes right now of the Ember. It's not fun to play into Ravage, Corrosive Haze, and a really scary PA once she's level 6. And not to mention, the, you don't want to worry about the Sniper just shooting you from the back. So, it's very tricky for the way, at least with IG. That's why I fear for them in the, from their draft. And meanwhile, Bopuka, I, I presume this is Bopuka, is actually doing a lot of work here. Comes in, steals, some ties. Oh my, oh my god, takes his rune as well. This is how you play a 4 position support, by the way. Just goes around, wrecks havoc. Well, it's good to see what this trend can do. He can just keep doing this, picking up this, you know, just stealing all these bounty runes. He's, he's already level 2. Tidehunter basically has to abandon the lane, free lane for burning, which opens up the gank to the middle lane now. I'm not sure exactly how they could actually go into gank the middle lane. Unless Ember takes chain at level 4 to actually like do slight chain and start burning the sniper. And then connect it into a leech seed. Yeah, Pretty impossible in gank if you ask me. 
Mm, it's still okay if you go from behind. Like, you you need the creep wave to basically be in your favor, and then you can just wrap around, and then uh, Sniper's just an easy kill afterwards. Or you can just jungle as well, but I don't know, it's... I actually, Train is one of those heroes where he can jungle, get levels, and still be kind of useful. At least as to how you would play it in the old train, but otherwise... We should be seeing some action from him pretty soon. Like he, you can see what he's trying to do. He went for the nature's guys, which indicates that he does want to gank somebody. So is there a smoke on the courier? No, he went for boots. Okay, this makes the gank much easier now. And he has a wind lace to boot, so... 390 movement speed should be okay if he can find the angle. I mean, that's the problem. When you're trying to gank bit lane as a treant, like, there's just no tree. Like, how, how do you... How do you actually get this uh, gank going? He has to really walk around. This is generally why you see Trian more likely to do more stuff on the side lane. Trian pops the TP up top, pushes back the gank, and Abaddon will survive. And this is actually a lot of opportunity cost, right? So far, the Nature Skies has done absolutely nothing. Whereas I'm sure Living Armor would have done at least something for the team. That's why I said that with Trian, you need to make sure your Nature Skies ganks pay off. Because otherwise, it doesn't scale as well. And that's where the, like, the Midas part does come in, but... He's just so annoying, he keeps stealing all his bounty runes. Tides on him in good times. Well, at least on the bright side, he's almost level 3. All right. There we go. He's found the angle. Mid lane here, double damage on the... Oh, nice, uh, nice chain here from Ember. Preventing the crush from coming out. And walks around uh, from the slaughter. But here comes a tree in the mid lane here. If he could kind of wrap around against the sniper, this should be a kill. And the way that he took this long wrap around, I don't think sniper expects this at all. Yeah, this, this route is really annoying. Like, if you've ever had to play against a train like this, you will never see this coming most of the time. Unless, of course, but he does have branches, so I don't think he's going to get the angle. Ember's going to have to push him back. Oh, but Slaw's coming as well. Does he know? He does not. Oh, now they're even bringing in the bench. Okay, they want to go for this. But under the tier 1 tower though, that's really, really rough. Dude, they got tree, they don't care. Let's go. Oh, Here yeah, we go, 3 man out. gank, or he's gonna be a lot of trouble. They pop all the nukes on top of him, and that is gonna be an easy kill. First blood goes to the Ventral Spirit. Ventral Spirit might die on the way out. Slaughter is gonna be coming in. Venge needs to do some fancy legwork. Jukes around the corner. Woo! He's out. Nicely done by Q. Cat and mouse, and... Oh, they don't have a shrine to go to. They used it early on. So, okay, Wraith King goes for his omelette. How's PA doing at farm? Nothing exceptional, but they are kind of even on TS, at least for the carries. And it's a lot of hate for a sniper, like, but it's still worth it because you want, like I said, you want your ember to scale decently into the mid game. HYM hasn't found any luck at all with, you know, his, his rotations. You can't kill the Abaddon, you can't kill the ember. Game. Ooh, it looks like we're gonna see a TP from the PA here to actually set up a gank on, I imagine, the Rave King. Trin is actually gonna see this coming though, if he actually stays in Viz here. Let's walk away from the gank. Rave King, almost gonna turn 6, but I don't think he will before this fight. But here comes a tree and scoping out this gank. PA is gonna walk around. Really good vision. So, because of the nature's guys, they know they dodge the gank, and... Well, uh, yeah, Rave King should have level 6 after this, so... They don't want to take the fight, they wanted to try and get the kill before he was level 6. This is a pretty expensive rotation here, it looks like it's just a full lane swap. They're gonna let Slaughter to get some level up top. They want to force the issue, but Ty doesn't have level 6, so without it, they don't feel confident in at least in taking the fight. I mean, they're gonna try to force the issue under a tower against reincarnation. That seems suicidal. Yeah, that's I don't know about this. Oh, but they even bring the sniper in. What? The Rave King doesn't care. He just walks in. They see the sniper in the front line. Sniper. Well, triple Renan. That's one kill. They see. I believe that's Chuan. Chuan looking to TP out. Can they actually cancel the TP? Yes, they oh, can. Gosh. Secondary kill. 
And that'll be it. They didn't even kill Rave King. They weren't even close killing Rave King. Rave King now has, well, pops Clarity and Sal back to full HP and has armor like finished. So I say overall, the game after that engagement going extremely well. 2000 net worth here for, uh, for IG. That was just a really good read on that part. And um, it just feels right now that I, or the VG, they, yeah, these guys are just pressured. They don't really seem to be on the same page. Like, Ty doesn't want to fight, but at the same time, you know, the team is like saying, go, 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 go. They bring in the sniper, end up losing the fight for nothing. But, oh, can PA get the tree in here? Nah, uh, Trin's about to go in this. Nature's guys, yeah, yeah, he'll be fine. So I've been seeing this particular build a, bot a bit more, which I find surprising. The the leveling up of the Nature's guys, because you imagine Living Armor is the first spell you want to max because it's so good at keeping your tier 1s alive, keeping your heroes alive from ganks, but I've seen more and more of this kind of information gathering type of playstyle. Which is why I said that Trian is basically... Alright, Magic Missile trip double ran it in and that's a kill. I'm telling you man, this hero doesn't need creep kills, just need a gank. And he's uh, yeah, second, second highest net worth right now, so looking pretty good. I mean, that's just the way train is played now. You max out the nature's guys. It's not so much about living armor, because you know, let's just face it. If you depended so much on living armor, you basically played it the boring way. Now it's more fun. You, know, you can do things. You can actually roam around. Especially like I would say, make it pubs. Oh, actually, Rave King. Oh. All right, reincarnation is gonna trigger. Ports are coming in right now. PA is really in there, and this could be a very nicely bait. Pop the shrine by accident, I think. But now PA is going to be dead, another remnant in. They don't have the fire chain. PA is on the run, looking to deny himself, will not be able to do it against the Ember. Yet another kill for Ember Spirit. Looking pretty good. Yeah, they, they didn't want to get the risk of bringing Ori in. That's why he didn't go past the tower so that the PA could link to him. But at the same time, you know, space created. And if you look at Yang, he's not bad in. He's just free farming top. Yeah, I think that, well, two moves in a row now. I, th I think Vichy kind of jumped the gun a little bit too heavily, and now they are very far behind. Abaddon used to be the same net worth as the Tide Hunter. Like, they both weren't actually getting a lot. But now, uh, given at least two to three minute free farm, Abaddon also did not join that first fight. He was just free farming up top. Oh. And Treant, I, oh, no I think the sentry just died. Yeah, it just died, but they saw the Treant. So that's why they pinged it out. And you're right, Trian is queuing up the Hand of Midas. So he is gonna have all of these abilities max. He is straight up maxing nature's guys. And Double he is... Midas as well. Abaddon has a Midas almost done. He's already at 1300 gold. Top tower, they're just leaving that tower. They wanna force the issue, they wanna win that one team fight, and that could potentially turn the pace of the game for them. But right now, they haven't had any luck so far. Tied, despite having Ravage, we, ha we still haven't seen it. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't think the pacing of the game is gonna change a lot because Trian despite not maxing the living armor will slow down these pushes and if you look at the dire team They're just not good at pushing sniper is really the only one that could hit tower and he doesn't really have too much damage to speak with They'll probably get this tier one, but I think apart from that um, The game is very much so in the control of the radiant team the next item I'm gonna be looking for is the blink dagger on the uh, wraith king because once he gets it I think the radiant is really ready to Start going all over the map and start picking out people. Alright, so you're in trades. You're also looking at the slaughter blink dagger. That's another huge power spike for them. And um, but like you said, you know, the Rave King. Once he gets the blink, he can actually just YOLO in. But he, of course he needs reincarnation back off cooldown first. Why is Tide Farm? He's still trying to complete that mech. No blink daggers for him. Jid is banking right now on the mech on Tide with the blink on Slaughter at the same time. Actually, I'm actually wondering whether uh, Rave King will go blink. Looks like he's switching it up. Yeah, he's gonna go for Desolate instead. Because the one thing about blink is you blink into this lineup and you get Tide Ravaged. That might not be the best way to start a team fight. So might be just better off to kind of play the counter initiate game. You do have Treant, you do have a Photic Shield and a Venge Swap. So, so I think it's okay to play a little bit safer uh, instead of the aggressive move. So. And it seems like Burning is uh, agreeing with that sentiment. Going for straight damage. Yeah. Rave King always want more damage, I suppose. Mm -hmm. 
Well, also because with just from the nature of the heroes, like you've got PA, Tide, Slaughter. These are the heroes who are going to force the fight for you know for you. So you won't need a blink. They're going to come straight to you. So I like the Deso. I would thought BKB, so at least you can dodge some of those spells. He can still get kited around quite easily, especially with a good Chuan ult. Chuan yeah. really needs to get those ultimates off. I think the BKB would be nice as like maybe a third or fourth item. I, I still think the Blink is a very nice item against Sniper overall, so maybe he'll go for it after the Deso. But maybe going for it now is probably an easy way for Vichy to come back, right? You Blink into a Tide, Tide ravages, pops mech, and suddenly your team is kind of really out of position. Um, whereas if you go for it more like a mid to late game blink with a BKB backup, then a very different story. Again, like you said, the Radiant team is working with double Midas, so they could play this game a little bit slower if they want. There's no, there's no rush here. Ember went for blade mail. He didn't go for like a veil discord. I think that's fine, right? He's really the only one that's dealing massive da uh, magic damage. Most yeah, of his team. Help. Yeah, it's good because it's great against the PA. Especially the sniper, when there's no way to reach them, or rather, if you you know if you don't have a backup plan to ex for an exit, it's a good item. But yeah. the smoke rotation, though, they should be able to find the ember. Oh! Did they see it? Oh, nicely done here. Ember jumps to the low ground. Are they gonna still go on him? Crystal Maiden is here. They do have the frostbite on him, but I think he will be able to jump away. Trees are broken. They set vision on him. Ooh, nicely done here, but he's still gonna go down. He is gonna get living armor up as well. Pops a blade mail, but now everybody's in a very, very deep spot. They're gonna see the PA. They need to pop that Ravage right now. The Ravage is gonna hit on the front line. Burning does not care. He pops his ultimate. Or sorry, that's gonna be Abaddon popping his ultimate. On the back line, they see the sniper. They gotta kill the sniper. Sniper letting those shrapnel go off. And there is a buyback from the Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit does not have the remnant. Looks like the ultimate has trigger. Everyone looking at TP out. Here comes the remnant in. They see Ori. One person has died. And Yang is on the run. He does have Blink Dagger to actually get out of this fight. And I think he will be fine. Tira is gonna cancel that Blink momentarily. But they shouldn't be able to actually catch up onto him. He blinks. And no TP. I wonder if they clicked on his item before. To see that he didn't have TP, they're still searching for him. They're okay, like, even if they leave him be, it's gonna cost them quite a bit of time. But of course, you know, the best scenario is if you oh, find a kill. Oh, range creep, OP! Oh no, disaster. Okay, no, he actually still gets fine. Trian didn't get the, yeah, he didn't get the click. Yo, Trian's moving fast though. 509 movement speed with that Tranquil. Hit him. Hit him. Oh! He wants it. He wants it bad. He doesn't have a TP for 30 seconds. He's out. By the way, that was a very good retreat by Vici. They just like synchronized TP four or five people at the same time. And they did lose two on the way out, but considering how deep they were, I think that was actually a pretty good play by Vici. Unfortunately, they still lost out on the exchange though. They, they did force a buyback, which I think it was very valuable. So that's going to slow down his BOT's timing, making him less able to split the map like he usually would as an ember so that's still pretty big good ravage use as well and you can see what they were trying to do using the mech and the blink dagger timing like i talked about so looking for rave king okay he's gonna get a death so up so that's when they when he completes it that's when they try for another smoke bench mm, not really looking for the swap Is Trin done with his Midas? Yep, Trin actually has been long done with his Midas. Alright, game is really looking good for IG. Up by 6 kills, net worth wise, 6,000 gold in only 16 minutes of gameplay. Can't really ask for uh, much more of a bigger lead. And of course, Trin is doing Trin things, keeping Tyrus alive. I'm not exactly sure what, what the play is for Vichy Gaming. They will have average backup in a couple seconds, so they do want to do a 4 or 5 man push. Rave King will have his ult up as well. I don't know about this push, man. I think Radiant is ready. Well, they have Ravage, so this is where you have to fight. It's a pretty good decision, considering you have to slaughter as well. But, yeah, the PA is on the way. With the Deso completed. Here's the thing, I don't think Radiant has to fight. They could just sit here and just keep Living Armor to tower up. Exactly. Like, like if, if Dire commits to this push, this is going to take at least like 3-4 to four minutes to so actually take down the tower. And I just don't think that's worth the time here for Vichy Gaming. I agree with you, uh, especially since Abaddon is just free farming, he has the relic now, you can see the courier is on the way, but this is also a pretty good read, like, you take the Roshan, and I'm pretty sure the Radiant knows what's going on, so, okay, 
Yeah, they want, they want to contest this. Well, here comes Abaddon. That's going to force everyone to go back out. Don't think the Radiant team could take down the Roshan just yet. Especially without Abaddon finishing. There's a swap going in. They want the Sniper. Sniper going to get bursted down for the Ravage. As well as the Mech. Not going to keep being able to keep them alive. There's a buyback on the Sniper. They've lost yet another. Okay, they're going to focus on the Vengeful Spirit. Vengeful Spirit. Wow, look at all of that HP getting gained back. Aphotic Shield is going to be there. So, no harm, no foul. They got one. They got a buyback. And they got another. So, very good fight here from, from Vichy Gaming. Or sorry, from IG. Everyone trigger happy with these buybacks. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like they're not locking down the right heroes. Especially if you look at the PA. He doesn't know who to hit. You can tell that he's very confused on who he should go for. He's not getting the crits as well, which doesn't make things any better. So if I recap... Yeah, you can see all the spells being thrown out and just the benefits of having that bad energy. So that's why I said the laning phase. They, even though they could... Technically snowball after that, they're not. So this is where the bad and Wraith King things, man. This is why you ban Wraith King. Yeah, I think we're at a point where no no looking back. They get the Aegis, they have Radiance finish soon on Abaddon. Again, they have double Midas running. They barely have enough damage to kill Wraith King once, let alone twice. I I don't see exactly how VG could make a comeback unless IG just I don't know, throws their keyboard on the ground. Lucky crits, believe in the PA Arcana, Lumi. You gotta believe. Alright, we need we need Twitch chat to give him some some energy. Spam some bless RNG for, for a PA play here. I mean, does have a Deso, so we'll crit really hard. Call GG. <laughs> is this real what? GG? Wait, what? Okay. I mean That is I wasn't I wasn't really exaggerating when I said this game is really like out of hand. <laughs> And it is, right? Like, how, how do you go in, into Wraith King and Abaddon and c expect to kill them twice when they have Radiance and Living Armor? Well, looks like you, you need the full 5 Arcana strat, Lumi, because... Uh, yeah, you, you can see that's why they tried to force the fight bottom lane, and when they didn't win that, that's when things just went to the dogs, basically. That was, like, the earliest GG I've seen in a long while. What? Okay, I mean, I thought Chinese teams don't give up until, I don't know. Three racks is down, right? Exactly. So, oh, e okay. Even till then, I thought it was. I thought they would not give up at least until the one lane of racks went down. But in yeah. this case, I mean, yeah, like that sniper had less net worth than I don't know the Venge almost. No, that that's that's untrue. The Venge has less than the sniper. But that buyback on the mid lane, that was just. I don't know if that was tilt or anything, but just did not work out. Did not work out. He's tilted. But that's also the downsides of why you don't see Tide Hunter anymore. Because when you play on the Ravage timing, it's it's a really long cooldown, right? Compared to what we're used to seeing, like the meta for offlaners right now are usually heroes with short range, like short cooldown stuns. And when you don't have anything like that, and you're playing around along Ravage, it's a lot of time for IG, and that's why they're top of the net worth. Yeah, I mean, was it really about the Ravage? Like they fought every fight with Ravage and Mech. And they still lost all those fights, uh, minus the one that you know Ty Hunter was only level five. So I, I don't know. I just think that they got somewhat outdrafted, and they definitely got outplayed pre Ravage, and they they were just way too far behind. But that is game one. Uh, I guess easy job for us casters. It's only like a <laughs> sixteen minute or eighteen minute GG. But we'll take a short break. Game two is coming up next, guys. Don't go anywhere.